Immigrant families are everywhere in Florida. A third of the state's children live in those families. Many of them are a mix of immigration statuses. Some members are U.S. citizens. Some are seeking asylum. Some have a permit to live and work here, like a green card. And some are undocumented. As part of WMFE's special series, Central Florida Seen and Heard, Immigration Divide, reporter Joe Burns sat down with members of a multi-generational immigrant family in Dover just to hear their story. 50-year-old Santiago Arroyo is one of 10 siblings. Nine of them followed their parents from Mexico to Florida in the 1990s. He's a U.S. citizen now and runs a house painting company with business across Central Florida. We start like my father. I work in the fields, pick strawberries, pick cucumbers, oranges. And then we start, we start moving from the agriculture to the warehouses and then to the construction. And then Santiago Arroyo started his own company. At his home on a Wednesday evening, his mom and dad, several of his sisters, plus some of their kids and grandkids have gathered. The kitchen table is loaded with the makings of chicken tinga tostadas, yum. We clear the food away and put two microphones on the table. <laughs> My first question is for an older sister, a woman with curly gray streaked black hair and luminous brown eyes behind black rimmed glasses. We're using the nickname Ave because she's still undocumented. If you were to choose a word to describe your family, what would that be? A faithful family. I think God is our center of our life. I know that uh, God blessed us as a family to bring here in this country. It's a recurring theme for the Arroyos being rooted in faith. Ever since back in Mexico, their parents would lead them in saying the rosary together. Their father, Don Asiano Arroyo, who's 81 now, says he first came over by himself in 1988 to pick strawberries. Here he is with the help of a translator. I came to Florida because uh, I needed job opportunities. I didn't really have a lot of schooling back home, and... I, all I had was my two arms. Donaciano Arroyo was undocumented at first. The family says he became a U.S. citizen in 2006, which made a big difference for most of the siblings. The urgency behind being able to become a citizen was my children were having difficulty being able to adjust their status, and so I had to apply for citizenship to make it easier to petition for my family. Santiago Arroyo says that during his first 15 years in the U.S., when he was still undocumented, he worried about driving without a license. That was my biggest fear, that if I get in trouble with the law, my legal situation never will be fixed. After my, my father became a citizen, everything sped up. In six months, we were already with a green card. The family members range in age from 1 to 81, and when they get together, it's loud and fun, and there's a great variety of good food. That's according to a niece who asked to be called by the nickname Chari to protect an undocumented relative. She says one holiday is an especially big deal. Christmas Eve is a very important day, and it's just like you're up at like 8 in the morning trying to prepare food, and you're just up until like midnight, you know, and just these traditions that they're trying to instill in us that we're still hopefully able to like show our kids in the future. Chari says her aunts and uncles grew up together but were shaped by different experiences of life in America. So they all have different feelings, different interpretations of everything and it's like they all have their own struggles. For Ave, as a married mother of five, a permanent resident card, the green card, has remained out of her reach. Before when my children were uh, small, I was afraid. I didn't want to drive, so I was keeping most of the time in my house. Every time that uh, we went to the church or buy groceries, it was like hard, because I'm always telling my children, be good, don't move, 
The police is everywhere. She says her children were also afraid. All this year, it's like living in the, sh uh, in the shadow. So we're not talk about this, not even with my family, because it's something like just inside me or my own family. Ave says she thanks God for the courage to take courses and find a job. She's worked for the same company for 20 years, starting in the fields, moving up to a warehouse, and eventually working in an office. Avi says her sisters have asked her to visit Mexico with them, and that's something she longs to do. I wanted to go with them one time to see my Mexico lindo y querido because he's my country. But visiting her beautiful and beloved Mexico would mean leaving behind, perhaps for good, the life and the grandchildren she has here in Florida. The family likes to take vacations together, but Avi says the new Florida immigration law which took effect July 1st, forced them to move their vacation up this year. SB 1718 makes it a felony to transport an undocumented person into or back into Florida. And we were thinking, oh, maybe this is going to be the last vacation, family vacation, because of this last. Still, for Ave, their life here is a promise fulfilled. When we were in Mexico, we used to pray the rosary every day. So there is a promise. When families pray together, they will be together. That promise that our God says, it becomes true in our family. Because we are living all together, the nine siblings, we're still living in Florida. She says the new fears that have come to her community with SB 1718 have reminded her of that promise. Joe Burns, 90.7 WMFE News.